and we're live with no interruptions on our YouTube channel live. that we fucking have. We have a YouTube channel. Did you know this? Again. Um, <laughs> We don't have to, to came back so fast. We don't necessarily have to talk about it because I'm putting out a video, uh, like a channel update video mm -hmm. that's like two minutes long explaining it. But just in case you didn't watch that and you're for some reason watching this, uh, we didn't have our YouTube channel for like two weeks. So, but also that's like a nice holiday break. So thanks, Shueisha. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's talk like... shit. Let's talk shit about them. No. I'll never know. <laughs> they make One Piece and JoJo, so I can't. I can't let them. I, I yeah. can't do them like that. Cool. It was pretty fun. What's funny is, what what's funny is that like, we had videos to put out during that time. I didn't want to we... work on them because of the emotion. Because like, I yeah. have it completed, and like, it, it would just feel like, if I if it can't go up right now, and we don't know if we're gonna open a new channel or something, I might as well just play video games, <laughs> which is so, <laughs> so I did. I think since the last podcast, I was. Fired and then hired. No, I don't think it was that long. <laughs> but a lot has happened in the life. Um, mm -hmm. How was everyone's holidays? It's currently January 7th. America was defiled yesterday. But, you know, that's just another... Defiled. That's just a, contu a, a continuance of 2020. You know how it goes. Yeah, yeah you know. What, what's, I, gonna, I, what's tomorrow going to be called in history books? The, the day the, the civil war started? Is falling? Oh, Jesus. I, I saw a post that someone was like, uh, I was trying to explain to my parents that nobody under the age of 40 expects anything good to happen ever again. I saw both of you <laughs> like that on Twitter. So shout out. Yeah. yeah. Um, shit's rough out there, but you know what's not rough? Yeah. Free talk. Uh, Tyler, uh, what, you got any like loose things you want to bring up? Tell me how your holidays went, if you did anything cool. Man, uh, I was going to, like, make a desk and everything, all this other stuff. Like, I was going to redo my office. And then I started playing games for, like, one day. And I was like, <laughs> oh, man, it's great to do nothing. Uh, so <laughs> I did nothing for two <laughs> weeks. And it was fantastic. I think, like, every adult needs... Every, yeah, like, everyone needs a do-nothing period every few years, at the very least. It's so yeah. hard existing, so it's like, let me just chill. It's called uh, leisure time. I studied that in college. I got some new architecture books, uh, oh, so I think this year I'm going to try and do like three houses total, like just personal designs. Cool. See if something I could work on. Um, three houses. Yeah, but like that's Fire like the bare minimum. I was like, I have had three houses. I have three designs that I want to just uh, sketch out. We'll see what happens with them, you know. Um, I may try to enter, like, a competition at some point in the year Ooh. if I become jobless for too long. Like, they have month-long architecture competitions. If you didn't know this, um, architecture know this. has always been competitive. And not in the sense of, like, angrily competitive, but, like, fiercely most or a lot of buildings throughout history have been decided through competitions in architecture where people submit their designs, they have concepts, presentations, and then uh, whoever, you know, get, like, whatever they like the most, they receive the winning bid is this for their designs and then the building is made. Is this like a, you go to a company and then the company workers compete? Or do they, like, literally just Absolutely open it up not. to this everyone? Is like a worldwide architecture competition where professionals to college students enter in these. So they go, like, Dang. we're going to remodel the opera house in Sydney. Um, it comes to mind because of better call Saul, but like we're gonna remodel it everyone submit your submission like it's it's like that yeah um oh, there was actually dang. something very similar to that that uh i think i was looking at maybe last year or a year and a half ago it was for this old uh like 15th century old english house somewhere in europe and it was like this two acre property somewhere in the hillside that also had like half of a theater kind of built into the side. So like they wanted to create, uh, redevelop it into a arts and culture center. And so people just like come up with designs that they think like they give you the space, they give you blueprints for the space, they give you elevations. Um, 
and like the intention and the goal and then basically it's almost like a game jam but it's dragged over like yeah, six months if, if when you explained it it's it cool. like a super game jam when's blizzard gonna come out and be like hey everyone pitch your pitch your designs and your vertical slices for our next shit game i mean <laughs> man that's that's the future i was sitting here thinking the other day i was like man I we got DVD. blizzard in retrospect let's say uh bethesda there you go that's there you go. Like, we used to have CDs all the time, and people were like, oh, let's let's listen to our CD, and that's what people used to do. And then we had DVDs, we watched movies, now we have streaming services. Eventually, it's just going to be everybody making their own content, and that's all we consume. That's a future. That's a cool future. I yeah, told right. make the eyeball videos where you have to put the videos directly into your retinas. Oh, yes. yes. Um, Joe, drama. how was your Christmas time, and what free talk things would you bring up? Uh, so Christmas time was fun. I got a new job, so I quit the old one, and my life has been better since. Oh man, Joe hated his job. I'm so happy for him. Yeah, fuck okay, that it was. It was. Yeah, it was more of like a my hours sucked. I always yeah. had the night shift, and I was up until one o'clock in the morning. It, it made it walking. hard to schedule stuff and even talk to Joe. Like, yeah, I would come home and everyone would be drunk, having fun. I'd be tired and or sad. Or everyone would be wrapping up. And like, yeah. Yeah, poor it's like, okay, good night, y'all. I'll sadly eat my Whataburger at home. Uh, oh, but for Christmas, I uh, hung out with family. Um, I got some good board games. Um, I got a board game called Tapestry, which I think is mechanically fun, but thematically boring. Yeah. Uh, and then a game called Nemesis, which is thematic, thematically great, but mechanically bullshit. Um, so it's it's a very yin and yang situation. Um, but I'm I'm excited to try out Nemesis for sure with y'all because when are you doing um, your board game tier list to present to us? You'll just make yeah. the tier list and then you can you can have your thirty minutes to talk I'll, through it. I'll do I'll do that like one one piece video where the guy like gets everyone in the room and he's like, All right, I'm gonna do all of one piece in front of y'all. Y'all gonna fucking listen for the next three hours. That, the best video, guy that video is five hours long and I watched it all one night when I was I was saying out in like a video game. <laughs> um, I also, I also did a taboo thing and went to Florida, and mm. for the Aggie Orange Bowl game. Yeah, uh, I saw that. I was like, man, Joe, like, you flew I on guess, a plane. Too. I terrifying. guess you're immune. You've done everything possible to catch COVID. Yeah, and here you are. I am- and the front I, the I am. I am the. I am the genetic makeup that is required for the vaccine. It might not um, look like it, but this is what peak man looks peak, like. Yeah. <laughs> I might have gotten COVID like over um, the winter last year because I got the flu really badly and I was like out for like a whole week. I was walking around and I was shaking. Um, but anyways, other, hmm? other than that, I think most of the stuff I've been doing will be doing over like just normal discussions. Um, uh, but yeah. Bradley, how was your winter break? And have you done anything small you'd like to bring up? Dude, so I've been wanting to build my own computer for so long. That's right. And I finally like I finally sat down and was like, okay, let's fucking do it. Let's buy the parts. And almost all the parts got here immediately. Except for my fucking graphics card. <laughs> but after waiting for almost a month, I finally got a shipping update that it's in the United States? Question mark. I don't know if I believe it though. I've been lied to before. It was supposed so, to get here today, wasn't it? Uh, it was supposed to get here today, and uh, I am not playing on a cool new gaming PC. So uh, make of that what you will. <laughs> Why Bradley has. But, what, 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 I was gonna say Bradley has terrible luck with the mail because we gave right? him a birthday present, and it just came in like a few weeks ago. Yeah, that was crazy. I've also just had a shitload of packages get stolen because uh, my front door is in full view of the parking lot. So, uh, like, pretty much any package that actually gets left at my door instead of the front office will get stolen. That's fucked up, man. And here's the thing. Our apartment complex... Not the worst place, but there's some fucking thieves out there. Joe can attest to that. Oh, yeah, that's right. I <laughs> yeah. there's, some, there's some mischievous little shits in here, I think. Some teenage fucks out here. Yeah, I, I came to visit them, and I was unloading my car. And I left, granted, my fault, but, like, I was bringing stuff in. I left my car unlocked for just, like, an hour while I was talking to them. And we went out to go get dinner. And someone had opened my car and stolen the coin tray from my car. 
in broad daylight. Oh my god! Yeah, I, um, I've Anthony. left my car open here multiple times, but I like. I guess they just saw you and they're like, "That guy, that guy comes from." Yeah, because like straight up, someone destroyed the lock on my driver's side door to get in my what truck. The so. Fuck? I yeah. I, since that day, Joe, I always lock up now. So I'm, hell yeah. I've been paranoid about leaving my stuff anywhere and stuff being taken from me for like the past like week and a half now, or even like whatever I visited y'all like, three weeks ago. I guess it was yeah. three weeks ago. Um, but yeah, yes. I uh, you came. You yep. all came to visit right after the podcast. You know what we no, can right talk now. about? We can talk about Pokemon TCG. But we'll yeah, I was just about to oh, yeah, sure. we did a draft. Cube kind of deal. Cube. <clears throat> the cube was great. Uh, yeah. As for me, um, the holiday season was pretty low key because I, my uh, family was not in the country, but I went to go spend it with my really close family friends who are basically family. Um, mm-hmm. And I took Tyler out to eat at a Brazilian steakhouse for the first time. Hey. I took him and his girlfriend Kelly, um, and it was a great time it was a nice night with friends and good food and uh tequila yeah willer like just ordered me this drink didn't know what it was he could have roofied it for all i know like came in 20 minutes before to the bartender i was like here put this in this guy's drink and then like pretended like he was late and i was just like yeah he was like oh get this i was like okay don't even know what it was i still to this night don't know the name of it Caipirinha. Yeah, I don't even know that. That that might as well be a roofie in Portuguese. <laughs> like that's that's Portuguese for sleep drug. Yeah, well, it, it was good. I liked it, and the cheese breads are all you guys care about, anyways. So yeah, uh-uh. you didn't invite me to cheese so, bread night. Cheese breads so, are fucking dope. I love cheese bread. This is my first time in a Brazilian steakhouse and i knew like the deal with the red card like you flip it to green if you want like more meat brought to you green. but oh my god because of covid they just bring everything to you yeah like, it was they literally actually. bring you a buffet yeah so the way that uh my my brother works at this restaurant as the general manager and the way that they adapted to covid times which no other restaurant did and i think it's pretty smart but there was missing one like ux feature is they bring out the buffet to you so you don't have people walking up to the buffet and breathing their COVID on it, which I think mm-hmm. is really creative. However, they have the little card for meat that you can flip from red to green. They don't have that for the buffet. So they just never stop with the buffet. It's like, yeah. and at some point of the meal, I switch into meat only mode, meat and rice and mashed potatoes after I've done the buffet stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. And then it's like, no, eat these salads, motherfucker. Well, they yeah, they they kind of didn't even stop with the meat, even when our cards were on red. They're sometimes, just like, yeah, hey, they just yeah, don't... you want some more food? And the answer is yes. Yeah. Um, do I have anything of notes? Um. Uh, yeah, like Joe, I've also recently got a new job, a contract where Bradley works. So. Bradley's yeah, actually and, my uh, boss now, uh, but I'm yeah, the host of the Roundabout uh, cast, so who has the real power? So, uh, <laughs> I, everyone thinks I did it to help my boy Willer out, but I really did it for me, because uh, it became Willer very coming apparent. on board. <laughs> that became very apparent in the first three days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Willer coming on board has made my life much easier. So, but it's a chill contract, and Bradley has extended my streak of having excellent leads. I've been very lucky. Like I feel like programming leads just like can't really miss. Like I've never had a bad one. Like remember yeah. Mark from Bitloft? Mark was a cool ass guy, and he was super he helpful. Less, and he put up with a lot of shit because like I was still learning a lot at the time. Yeah. Um. So oh, shout out to him. Uh, Joe, you were never my lead. Sorry. Oh I, wait! I, you know what? They're maybe not all leads great. <laughs> but, yeah. But I digress. Um, oh. Uh, but I digress. What? Let's talk about. Wait, Bradley. I wanted to ask you, what's Genshin up to these days? Because I know that is a, a constant in your life, and I always. Oh, to you know, it. they just released a new fucking region, so I've been playing the fuck out of that. Basically, what, what element region is this? 
Uh, so this is a, a region for any one of the capitals. Th mm. This is just like a region independent of one of the uh, uh, elements, That's though. Smart. It, this region is like very mountainous, so most of it's like very icy. Fuck, the mountain region was my favorite part, so like that's pretty cool. Yeah, so it is pretty cool, and it came out like right as I was coming back from seeing my family for the holidays. Um, and I think I had like two days of like staying at home left, so I did nothing else for 48 hours. So. Excellent. Uh, I'm just very glad, and like maybe the most anticipated character yet is gonna be on the next banner, and I've saved like ten thousand Prima gems for her, and I I don't know I'm just so ready to just roll. What is the new deal with this algorithmic, uh, like this new algorithm girl that they've created? What what what's so cool about her? Uh, she's just really fucking cute, and everyone loves her in the story. There you go. Speaking fucking, of banner, that's all you fucking need. That's all you need. Treasure Cruise has had a banner going for most of December, and uh, I'm very frustrated. 20, with it. Twenty days left. I know. I'm so frustrated with it, but Willer got his luckiest pulls of all time. I am in the top one percent now. All of a sudden, <laughs> so like, it's really upsetting. After years of playing this game, I find like they released two new characters. Um, uh, two new legends, and one was Odin, and the other was Gold Roger himself. So both of these are Chad ass characters, and I managed to get both. And for <laughs> the first time in my many years of playing Treasure Cruise, I got like the overpowered character as they came out. So that's pretty exciting. So I've been playing more because of that. It's a good game. Meanwhile, I'm on pool six without spending a dime, and I'm I'm dying here. Just like oh. you're good. You gotta pay I them know. so they ra raise the rates for you. It's true. Will I spend money? I did spend some money on this one. Yeah, but let's see what's what's going on in our world. Uh, what's going whole, on? Whole is happening, I guess. But uh, real quick, since we keep, since it's spoiler free, uh, Attack on Titan still coming out, but notably not last weekend. So that was a bummer. Mm -hmm. um, I really want to express my disappointment in Willer and not being a patient lad. So because yeah. it wasn't coming out next week, so I I read the manga chapters as I watch them, and it's really good I do this because the anime is kind of moving at a fast pace right now where they cut out a little bit here and there. Um, and sometimes it's for the better because there's a lot of fat in the manga, a lot of long discussions, but sometimes they cut out crucial things, so I'm glad I do it. I, whenever I see something like notable, I send it to the boys. Mm -hmm. However... I do read, like, a couple of pages ahead, and, like, where we stopped last episode, a couple pages ahead was enthralling, and then I just couldn't stop. I held out for Shit. months, not reading ahead, and I caught up in one night. It's, yeah. It was so good, guys. Oh, the story, uh, the story gets so good. I've never been more disappointed. And I'm more convinced than ever that Bradley will eventually love this story because I mean, yeah, I'm st I'm still watching it now. I'm uh, I think I'm like eight episodes into season three or something. Uh, you're almost at season three, part two, which is like what recontextualizes the story and made it made me actually like it. Like made me like go back and be like, oh, even season one's good now for me. Oh um, fuck. Uh, but like. It's been really slow in the anime, and I think we can agree, but, like, they've been really building up the characters because there's yeah. like, clearly a big event about to happen. Um, oh, man, I feel like the winds of change is about to happen. <laughs> I feel like everything's about to change, said a character the day before everything changed. Yeah. Um, um, I think that's really good because the, season four, it, Willer has talked about this, but it's a reflection of basically the first like arc of yeah. attack on titan yeah oh um, you really get that really vibe important, um for what i think the author is going for here and willer brought willer knows the answer now but we've had me and willer share an opinion about where a character is going in this series and i think willer confirmed that that that's kind of what we're doing here uh, i didn't but, say anything i just had a really good prediction that first time but i won't tell you yeah. how i went 
All I will say is the climax that's about to happen in the anime is going to be incredible animated. In, in the manga, it was already the best action segment in the story. So, like, and I really like the action segments in the story. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm super excited to see that animated. And, like, the story's gone such a wild direction. I can't even allude to it because I don't want to spoil anything, but, like, the main characters are really good and they have a really good dynamic right now and Armin and Reiner and Aaron are like all just choice characters um and some others shit's crazy out there but that's enough of that uh we'll continue updating it as the season goes on I I am worried I don't think the anime is going to be able to do it all in the 16 episodes that they said it's it's impossible too much happens I'm actually worried it's gonna be way too fast paced oh no but maybe like the action sequences like are gonna really scrunch down that number but like most of the manga from like chapter 100 which is where we started this season to chapter now 130 something which the manga ends in Mm -hmm. three more chapters so we're almost done most of it is just talking and strategizing so like you can't really condense that as well as you can action sequences. So I don't know. I don't know what they're going to do. The only thing I know is Kenny is cool. Kenny has maybe the best line in the series. Uh, Kenny! Kenny! I mean, that's not the line, but... Um, that's okay. <laughs> but it makes me laugh. Kenny says time. his own name. That's the line. Kenny! He goes, Kenny! Um, What's the South Park character? Tyler, why don't you talk to us about a Minecraft? I, 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 I only I, know Shovel that, Forge personally, and me and Bradley I don't, I don't play Shovel Forge. Yeah, Shovel Forge. Oh, There's oh, much oh, better oh. things to talk about. I, I've been doing, a, like, if you play Minecraft, I've been doing the Feed the Beast mod, which that's like the most mo- popular mod pack that's out there, I think. This is only like my second or third time playing modded Minecraft. I've never done like all the crazy shit. I like I the second time I did it, I did like one of those like uh infinite resource engineering farm things where you just get everything unlimited no matter what. And that was dumb. So I went back to my try and true that I did the first time I ever played, which is beekeeping. My try and um, true. So Minecraft, like six years ago, somebody came out with this beekeeping mod, all right? Uh, and it was called Forestry. And like it was just introduced a lot of bees and uh, trees. Okay. Bees and uh, trees. Sounds so, good, truly. I mean, like, okay, so here's where it gets great, all right? The, there's. Like, all these different types of bees that you find out in the world in these beehives. And if you try and beat the shit out of the hive without the proper tools, the bees will just literally eat the shit out of you and kill you. It's great. Um, So don't piss off the bees. And, like, you have only, I think, like, four or five different types of bees you can find in the wild in, like, the overworld. But then you can find, like, a village and you can get some bee houses. You can start getting some materials to make some apiaries in different bee machines and then you can start breeding the bees let me tell you that pokemon has nothing on breeding compared to beekeeping and minecraft i like, mean i believe it and i i have yeah. done plenty of pokemon breeding it's like you're just fucking ditto a lot and then sometimes you're fucking something else <laughs> it is absolutely ridiculous um i want to pull up like all the different pages i have for bees um for something you didn't want to talk about you're pretty into bees dude Dude. i am i am crazy about the bees all right Uh, i about these fucking bees so (laughs) i I think this is the probably the third maybe possibly the fourth time i've seen like this particular group of friends to make a uh modded minecraft server to play together Mm. and like you know sometimes i might jump in for a little bit of it and uh i feel like usually this beekeeping mod is in there and uh whenever you open up your inventory you know over on the right side you can see like all the craftable items in the game and i think that's a mod but i'll be scrolling through the pages and i'm like how is there so fucking much bee related shit I feel like half the available items 
on our server are related to bees. And uh, it's so comprehensive. And I'll be walking around through the world, and there's all these fucking different bee types. And I'm like, it's very overwhelming, but very cool. I, like, so, there's a and lot. Tyler's here. counting something. I hear him. I, he looks like he's thinking really hard. In the base set, there's 35 different bees you can breed. All right. Um, some of them are the jungle bees. Those are my favorite because those are the first ones that introduce negative effects. So, like, you can have po – like, they poison you. And even if you have, like, diamond armor or something, it just, like, goes right through the armor and just starts dealing massive damage to your health. Can, can um, bees uh, attack? Like, you can use them as weapons? Yeah. With these, with these new bees, yes. But also with the poison bees, like, if I just went and set up this under someone's house – like underneath the ground i could like or just like nearby actually like the poison bees would just like bring them down to a half heart and then like it would take like one hit to kill them this server y'all play is it all like cooperative can y'all turn on each other and like fight each other or we, just we could if we elements? wanted I, we, we could if we wanted to i should join this server and like start some shit and like make it actually yeah. interesting. why is why do y'all not have a villain like how can y'all yeah will so be the main weeks? villain how, how can y'all play for so many weeks and not like do something antagonistic so, towards each other um because there's you know the term griefing that's like the main thing so like we have everything turned on like creepers blow up your house and everything um because a lot of people like we don't even fight like the monsters even like, nobody really does any of that. We just keep it on for this. And this is why I like Terraria more than Minecraft. I, is I, I guess it's just not that kind of server. Like, they, they don't want the smoke. They, they, yeah, they just and, and I mean, those exist. Um, I think, like, that's something we've always wanted to do. Where, like, towards the end, like, we set up a dedicated different area for, like, being antagonizing for each other. Um. But I digress. Anyway, there's 35 bees in the base set, and then there's one, two, um, bees, and three more additional sets of bees that exist. Um, what do you mean sets of bees? Do you mean like three different breed of bees, or do three more 35 sets of expansion bees? Pack like no, new bees. There, are, there are three more expansion packs of bees with even more bees. Um. <laughs> So there's like magic bees, which I don't like too much. I think they're a little bit weak. Extra bees are great. They provide a lot of additional materials um, and you can get like raw materials from them. Like if you go down the line, there's even some bees that'll shit out diamonds for you every now and then. Mm -hmm. um, but there's also like radioactive bees that will shit out like uh, radioactive bee uh, like honeycombs and provide you with uh, uranium. Uh, and then there's the career bees, which they're my new favorite type of bees because they're so, they are so damn stupid. All right. So you start off with like your base bee sets and those are like, you have to breed them correctly in order to branch out into the expansions of bees. Um, cause you can't find them out in the wild, which is great. You can find some of them, but mostly like you can't find any career bees in the wild. You just have to breed them correctly. Um, but you start off with like two base bees and then you get a student bee, but then you have to send the bee to college so he can become a graduate bee. Oh my and now, God. He, now he's got his undergrad and then he can start specializing him in different materials. You can get an engineer bee, okay. uh, a minor <laughs> bee, a police bee, an armor and sharpening bee, which are actually pretty ridiculous. We found out that the armor bee and sharpening bee can raise the flat stats of like any armor or weapon in the game. Steve, um, Tyler didn't want to talk about this because he's like the world can't handle it. I, 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 I guess that was it because yeah, this might be. I don't want to talk on a ratio level of like nonsense to time spent. This might be the number one in the roundabout cast history. <laughs> Like, I don't want to talk about Minecraft. I just want to talk about the bee. The longest segment of this episode is going to be what you just did right there. So, like, <laughs> but, but there's more. What's so, great is that we can, we can name this episode "Warning Bees" again. Oh shit! There you go. <laughs> so I I just bred something called an artistic bee, and 
sh if and any surface that's surrounding this bee's territory, it will just create paintings on the walls. Like it will just generate paintings <laughs> on any right. surface possible. The, I I was out. I I stopped carrying. Like I'm kind of coming back in. <laughs> this is getting kind of. Yeah, also has dead bees. No, okay. There's shut all up. shut up. <laughs> There's also bees uh, that will like produce special materials only in the career bees. And there's all, okay, there's a branch called the PhD bee, all right? And then you can get a business bee. And then like this business bee will do business with villagers inside of the game and like trade stuff for you. Uh, there's also an assassin bee and a thief bee. The assassin bee will kill bees in other beehives when you shoot it with the bee gun, also called the BB gun. Um, and then the thief bee will steal items out of other players' inventories. Dude, I wonder who architected all this. It's like some Minecraft modder out there is like, we, we need this beekeeping system. I have it's, two it's... loves in life, modding Minecraft <laughs> and bees. It is insane because this they, they're done by like four or five different people. There are multiple bee mods with over like a hundred and fifty bees. Yeah, and apparently games besides Minecraft have this because there was that Reddit thread someone sent to us where they were asking like, "What the fuck is it with survival sims and beekeeping mods?" It is in. Sane. So here's the great thing is there's an extension mod called Gendistry, which deals with biology and genetics and DNA manipulation. So like I have DNA splicers now that will take genes from bees and I can extract them and then input them into other bees. So like if I want to make a set of bees nocturnal or adaptable to like desert environments, I can do that mod now. That ties with your bee mod and lets you do yes. it. What the fuck? That's expansive. And this so, is all just tier one of the iceberg. Let me tell you. Let's yeah, so, okay, so can you do this in your special uh, Space Station 13 servers? Because I don't know, man. So there's also uh, tree breeding, which yeah. is an additional side piece to bee breeding. So you can breed different types of trees and they cross pollinate to form a new tree, but they can only do that while bees are actually pollinating their area. Tyler, Tyler, I think I have to cut this part out of the podcast. I, I don't know if anyone can get past this particular part of the podcast. <laughs> All right. Then, then include this one that there's one bee that you have a 1% chance to breed. It's called the Benson Bee. Oh, God. And it's, its description is, you like jazz? Yeah. And when you when it works inside of its beehive, it just creates random jazz notes. It should. Hey. That bee should be able to impregnate other characters. Because... That bee should be able to impregnate me. <laughs> yeah, Woo! that's a stupid thing. It's not a Minecraft talk. It's a bee talk. Holy fuck. Okay, anyways. I saw you posted uh, Mizusune from Monster. Did y'all see the Monster Hunter thing? Just real quick. I have not got to watch it yet. I did. Um, I think I'm just going to download the demo. By the I way, you guys got to talk about the Monster Hunter movie. No, oh, no I one, wish. No one watched that because we're intelligent. <laughs> I'm going to watch it. I'm going to watch it. Will uh, everyone let us leave our, his apartment to go see it? We did way better things. <laughs> What's your point? Uh, which we'll segue into in a little bit. Anyways, uh, the new Monster Hunter is such a step forward from the, not world, but the one before world. World's become its own thing. But, it's like, it luck. looks comparable to world, minus the graphics, like, holy yeah. shit. That makes me like think that, that world, world 2 is going to be the next greatest game of all time. Like, they're... That's the only trajectory this series can go in. I, like, I, so I anticipate good. World 2 to be better than our Persona 5. Yeah. Oh, I mean, like, I, World is arguably better than Persona here's 5. Here's the problem. is like, world when World 2 comes out, Game of the Year is usually a bloodbath. It will actually probably be the most peaceful Game of the Year talk ever. Sorry, bro. Because, <laughs> yeah. We let you have... I won't spoil what we let you have That's this all year. I needed. But, um... <laughs> I, I've already yeah, won. won. Um, oh Bradley's talk about it has made me want to play that game, but I need to get through. You need to play it uh, on the PC. Let me warn you ahead of time. Yeah, I'll, I'll do that. That game but, is wonky on the PlayStation Four, which I yeah. Own. 
I have another game that I'm working through right now that I'm going to talk about a little bit. Uh, Anyways, we did some Pokemon trading card game a couple weekends back. That was fun. Yeah. We bought three starter kits. Oh, we bought a box that came with three starter kits in it for $20, we which was insane. We have, like, five structure decks and a bunch of packs that we opened. It was really fun. I think yeah. every time we meet, we should pick up some new packs and, like, slowly mm -hmm. grow it at, like, communal collection. Um, I'm going to say it. Pokemon card game not balanced. No, I. I mean, look. I, I, I think y'all are just bad at drafting, to be I, honest. It's Tyler, true. I am. First terrible. of all, Tyler murdered us. It's it is what it is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I've been playing the online version, and I I managed to get some wins in there once I got like a V Max Cinderace. Um, however, there is this V Max Eternatus deck that I fought like three times that made me like not play since. We're like. He allows your bench to have eight Pokemon, and then for each dark Pokemon in the bench, it's, like, 30 damage extra. So, like, this with two energies, this guy is dropping 200 damage deeps on you by just having bench Pokemon and a basic Pokemon that you evolve with VMAX. But, Tyler, I did find I, out today, I, on that app, you can play Structure Deck only. That sounds like a much more interesting meta. Dude, it, it really does, and that's what I was actually about to say, is, like, if you want to play card games with your friends, I know, like, there's a lot of people, I like, I got deep into Yu-Gi-Oh!, like, metas can be fun with any card game if you're deep in the meta, like, metas are you fun adapt. Metas have access to all the cards. It, but it card is... games are really expensive, they add up, and some games get ridiculous, like, Yu-Gi-Oh! is expensive. With, like, some of the most meta cards, you need three of them. And then you yeah. need three of an additional card in a side deck, and like they're eighty to ninety dollars. Jesus. Each. Yeah. And then, um, like, what if that deck gets completely stomped by the next deck? You have to build a new one. Like holy shit. Card games are fun as board games, where you play them only with your friends, and you have like your own house rules. Our draft was super fun. I'm down. Our uh, draft was really fun. I'll be much better next draft now that I like. I am warmed we up. Yeah, we had a discussion on our Discord about card games, and um, I responded late for some whatever reason. But there are a lot of alternatives to like kitchen table card games that you can play, and I posted them in the uh, in that Discord chat. Like, there's a lot of card sets that just you buy the box, and that box is every card you'll ever need to play the game, and then you construct things that way, which I think is really interesting. I saw a Reddit post today about um, because I I, I I subscribed to the Pokemon Trading Card Reddit to see what was up. And I saw a post today where someone, like, ranked all, like, 40 structure decks that are currently playable in the meta. And I just thought, like, that was really fascinating because I like, like, that's a closed meta. You can't really alter your structure deck. So your, tr your structure deck is going to be strong against others. And you're going to have to play some weird alternative path against others. And then maybe there's some you just straight up lose to, maybe, if you, like, on the weaker ones. But I think, like, metas like that are interesting. It's like a fight, like a fighting game roster. You have your set characters, and then like there's just certain matchups that are like require you to play pretty different. And like that's the kind of meta stuff I like. To add on to that, I saw when I was I went and bought some more uh, Pokemon cards, and I saw there's a Yu-Gi-Oh box that had like five structure decks in it. It had like five or eight or something, and it was just like thirty dollars for like eight Yu-Gi-Oh structure decks. Yu-Gi-Oh is is like the Marvel versus Capcom of card games, dude. Like. You get those balls to the wall insanity. It's just right. like, in one turn, you just, like, fucking summon all, all these monsters that will just destroy... You one-hit kill people all the time in that game. All you have to do in Yu-Gi-Oh! is go, Light Punch! Uppercut! Anyways. <laughs> yeah. It's Light Punch. All you gotta do in Yu-Gi-Oh! is go, Thousand Dragon! <laughs> Baby uh, Dragon! Anyways, uh, what's next? Uh... Uh, my Big Mouth Food. Okay, Big Mouth. you know what? This one is uh, me formally apologizing to Tyler for <laughs> for uh, judging his tastes and liking the Netflix show Big Mouth. As it turns out, Big Mouth is a very fun show that has mm -hmm. a lot of heart and a lot of gross jokes, and I think that's a good mix. And a lot of. A lot of teetering on the line of pedophilia. A lot of children penis and yeah. boobs. Um, Unfortunately. Like, 
two to three percent more. Because I get the point. Is like. It's normal. Let's normalize it. It's not sexualized right now. However, there's just I, a little bit too much. Like, you made the point several scenes ago. So, I think that's the exact opposite of the intent. Is it supposed to make you feel awkward like you did as a teenager the first time you're coming of age seeing other people naked? I think it's to make it seem like yeah, he. Everyone has a little penis or a vagina, or you know, sometimes both. It happens. Maybe you guys really, have a little penis. I don't really want to talk too much about the, Shit. the that is a self child. <laughs> yeah, why did we open with the tiny penises? I want to talk about the good stuff, like the hormone monsters and characters like Missy and Jesse. The the complaint I have with Big Mouth is that the two main characters just never get redeemed. They, like, start good, and then by season four, they're both, like, just the biggest shitholes, and I don't know if it's ever going to turn around. It's just like real life. Yeah. It's like, like, eighth grade boys are the worst, fact. Mm -hmm. Okay, but, like, they have their moments. Yeah, that's the thing. They have no, moments. That's Andrew it. hasn't had a positive scene since, like, season two. Andrew is just, he killed his dad. Or his grandfather by masturbating. Yeah, he did kill his grandfather. <laughs> Not um, really, but... I, I really like the writing and the voice acting. Uh, yeah, the voice acting like, is really good. The voice acting is really great. Like, it, I knew Jordan Peele was in Big Mouth, but it took me so long to figure out who his character was just because he does such a great, like, character voice. He's not even the best voice. I think... I believe it's Will Arnett that does the male hormone monster, like Andrews. <laughs> he, his, line, oh, yeah. his line delivery is ace. It's so good. Oh. So is uh, Rick's. Why did I do? It, it took a while to grow on me, but it did. Yo, I didn't bro. even like Rick until, like, like Rick is an inside joke character, but I didn't like it until I had somebody else to appreciate the joke with. Okay. <laughs> the hormone Connie, monster is low-key bad, though. Yeah, Connie is, like, voiced by Maya Rudolph, and she's so uh, fucking funny. She gonna <laughs> take a bump of Maya. Maya. The way she pronounces certain words just kills me, and, like, the way she's, like... I, there seem some scenes where like she shows some innocence and like I don't know what I'm doing, which is like when she's like freaking out with Jesse. They're they're just fun. I, uh, I do like the characters. Um, like I like how there's more monsters than just the hormone monsters. Yeah, um, I, I like yeah. the depression they, kitty and Tito the mosquito. The like the really shame big. monster. Yeah, the sh the shame guy didn't show up at all in season four. I feel like I think he had like one small scene when they were like visiting that. That place. I will say yeah. season four, probably the worst one so far. I I like season four more than three. I very much didn't like the episode where you're like in Nick's future. I thought that was just kind of mad. That was a weird episode. I yeah, I hated cool. that entire yeah. plot. Um, and then, and then, yeah, it carried into the finale. So it was also like the worst finale. And like, uh, I, 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 I like what they were I, going I, for with that. But like those episodes were just not great. I, I, I very also, much like, agree that. Nick is probably the worst character. Uh, Andrew is actually horrible. Could, the thing with Nick is Nick realizes he's a shit. Andrew never apologizes for anything he does. He's just like, I think I'm that's, horny. I think that has something to do with uh, the upbringing that that character is around, like his father. Yeah, his father sucks. He's like, he's got this one line. He's like, Dad, do you like anybody? He's like, I love your mom, but don't tell her that. <laughs> that that pretty much encapsulates that character. I yeah. like Nick's parents. They're su they're such a unique TV couple. Like, there's I, I like I've never because... seen any characters like that. So that's pretty neat. Rogan has a character in uh, the fourth season. Yeah, he was alright. Um. They go to camp for three episodes, and these are probably the best three episodes of the entire season. It made me really upset that it was only three episodes, because I'm a big summer camp person, and I was really excited because all the promo stuff is them at camp. I was like, oh, yeah. that's the perfect setting to do weird hormone I, things, because everyone's okay. sneaking away. The camp, everyone's had, trying like, to things. the camp had the episode where like Andrew was guilty, so he couldn't shit, and that one was a little too much. That was a... <laughs> yeah, that... 
That Ignore was that. Like, imagine if that was the end of the season. When the when the Ocean of Period Blood episode is tamer than the shit episode, you know, you like you're dealing with something heavy here. Man, but milk though. Shut the fuck up, milk. Oh, oh I love milk because I knew like four milks growing up. <laughs> like we had a lot of milk in my town. <laughs> And, and Man, like, milk's the I best. just resonated with that ambiance that was surrounding that character because literally, like, the very entire thing is Milk is lying the entire time and, like, fabricating all these stories about his home life. Yeah. And, like, it makes it sound like he's being, like, preyed upon by this pedophile. Okay, just, no, like, here's weird the thing. I, I I went back, or someone posted, like, every line. I don't know where people got that from. There was nothing predatory about those lines, unless I missed something very obvious. Like, I mean, the very last thing, right before he says it, is like, hey, you might want to stay away from Bob Reedy. I felt like that came He's out like, of nowhere. Bob Reedy seemed like an all right guy. I, am, I, am I crazy? I, I think no, I just like, missed, I, I might have just missed something lot obvious. Of odd facts and just like random information that this character does throughout the entire show and i knew someone like this and he's just like at the very end he's just he's like it was, there is no bob reedy yeah. and he's just like when then naruto runs out i'm like oh my god i knew milk that's the hardest i've laughed in that show the naruto run was so good anyways that's uh. enough big mouth you did it tyler you got me to like a show you like Got good substance, good but, writing. But I got good you to like a game that I like. I, I, oh, I defeated you. Did I? So uh, we have our uh, game of the year talk coming up soon. Yes, we did. Uh, a lot of heated moments were had. A lot of juice was consumed, and on the spot, as soon as it was done, I bought our game of the year. Or so, maybe I didn't. Who knows? Slight, I bought one of the higher ups. Slight spoiler alert: We're gonna talk about Persona yeah. Five Royal, which was a surprise that it won, but I don't hate it. Yeah, that's I a, mean, that's it's five out of five out of five. Out of five. Mm -hmm. uh, I bought Persona Five Royal, and you know what? I feel really bad because at one point in college, Austin gave me yeah. his PS4 yeah. and Persona Five, and was just here, play it, and I didn't do it. Our, our mutual friend literally handed him all the tools to play the best game of 2017 and Tyler in his weird I don't I don't know what got you to flip Tyler this was time. in depression mode had, Tyler was in bad time uh, yeah that, yeah okay but you know what helps the bad time simulating a Japanese school life and stealing the hearts of evil adults. <laughs> Yeah, man, I I love like Willer's like I hope Tyler hates the first ten hours of story. Man, I really like the story. Yeah, yeah um, it's good. It gets the it progression gets incredibly better. Well, it dips I, and then it just shoots up near the end. I just got done with the twenty-two hour long tutorial that the <laughs> the first like thing is. He's not wrong. Saying, I say that a little sarcastically, but the game never stops throwing new mechanics at That's you. True. Yeah. Um, and I I've also played a game like Bravely Default where the tutorial fairy, um, or, or the tutorial cat Morgana, like I've been suspicious of this character the entire time, and also was just like, no, that's that's just. That's, that's just what that character's job is supposed to do. And I was like, okay, cool. No, you're capping. I am also suspicious of that character, and I think I'm right. That character okay. is uh, that character is always really pushy about moving the plot along, and it makes me very <laughs> uncomfortable. So is Morgana. So that's like <laughs> yeah, where my suspicions come from. <laughs> what character? Uh, you would you never played Bravely Default. That's a me Tyler thing. Oh, oh, Stay oh, out. Oh, Bravely Default. Oh, okay, I thought you were saying. Uh, you so, know what's crazy about this? Like when we were doing those talks, I had given up all hope of Tyler ever. Like it wasn't even like a possibility in my mind that Tyler would one day play Persona Five. So like when he bought, I it, also I got like, the full book edition for thirty dollars. Hey, you know what's thirty dollars um, right now? The game Joe's is gonna talk about next. So, hey. Yeah. Anyways. Um, Tyler, what are your thoughts so far on just the mechanical aspect of Persona? So here's my thing. If your modern day turn-based RPG doesn't have a weakness system in it, like, so a weakness slash knockdown system like Octopath and Persona has, mm -hmm. automatically you're, you're messing up. Losing a point. Yeah. 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 Um, it, being able to interfere 
with what is almost seemingly random combat is, is great. I, I think it's really nice that it allows you to reestablish control over something you don't have control over. Um, but also the combat's so quick. And I see that's what like it's a lot snappy. of people who don't like yeah. turn-based RPGs is about. They're like, oh, this is... And that's like kind of my feel for it at the very beginning. And I even made this point. It's like, it's either... It's really paper, rock, scissors, I feel like. Either you kill them in one hit or you die in one hit. But that's like very early game for me. Um, I'm also yeah. playing not on normal. I'm playing on a harder difficulty. Yeah, which I suggested um, because I think that difficulty is like really good. Yeah. yeah. One boss. So, that's like really dumb, but I mean, I played the first boss wrong apparently, um, because no, like if you don't like those are there to help you. If you don't get it, you could still win the boss. I'm pretty sure. Which I did. I like I did it old Final Fantasy style, where like you have the healer and the tank. I don't know why Joker became really strong during the final phase of the boss fight, but he does. It like becomes like near immune to like. Like, they use this golden strike or something, and it's supposed to be, like, the one-hit knockout move, but Joker was immune to it every time I got hit by it, so it only did, like, 20 damage. You had a person. Oh, you oh, had... had... Yeah, you had slime. Yeah. Or, 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 I did have slime. Or Oberion. So, for that first yeah. boss, you always gotta go in with slime, because you resist physical. There you go. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't have Oberon, because slime, you don't get... You slime don't encounter is... slime until the underground. Slime's higher than Oberon, so yeah. I must have had Oberon because I was like, oh, he's not taking any damage, so can, I can just kind of heal all of it. Those. But yeah, what do you oh. think of the character so far? Do you like him? Um, I like the character so far. I like the evolution that the characters are like kind of having together. Mm -hmm. Um, But the most part, I like how fluid the story is. Like, it flows really well together. They set up um, a... Uh with the overarching narrative of the whole game is in the past and you're in an interrogation building up to the present it's just brilliant because mm -hmm. you can go from arc to arc with having an interrogation scene in between that kicks you right off into the arc and what you're doing in the game is formulaic enough to where you can just apply a bunch of different stories to it and just have eight arcs throughout the game yeah. i just like how like, I, I, I did the first palace, and they're like, oh, we have so many days until uh, we we have to, uh, like, invade the palace or we'll get expelled. Mm -hmm. And then, like, that's the game over. Um, but you're limited to so many things you can do during each day. And the things you can do during each day is not grind levels, um, which I guess you can now in the underground. But there's also, like... So a block to that as well. You really don't and I want really to, you really don't want to be wasting days on grinding. If anything, yeah, you want yeah. to go there to do missions. Yeah. Um it, it's nice that they control the flow for you, but also give you a lot of options to do whatever you want. And that's like my golden formula is putting you on a right path for a game with still letting the player have a lot of options. They're like, hey. We're not telling you how to play it, but we're telling you when to play it, you know? Um, my favorite part about Persona games is not even the combat or the story, even though I like both in all the games, or the characters even, or even like the social link dating aspects. It is the paralysis you get when you've, when you've hit mid-game and you can do so many things that day and you don't know which one is optimal. And you, I get such a good feeling from the stress that it gives me i don't know like i i just love the managing your time aspect it's something you could put into way more games but they just don't and persona's scratching that itch i just having limit using time as a resource is just always fantastic for me i yeah. I, I agree and i think also like and i maxed out every character in my royal run so like yeah that's the goal you want to hit in a, the goal of every persona run is to be max friendship with every character. And the game is built around making that a decent struggle for you to get through and, like, plan out. I'm yeah. not excited about the aspect of, like, I, I already realized there's, like, a plus run file that you can do. Yeah. New game um, because there were some mechanics, like, oh, you can't dodge the first piece of shot because your efficiency is not high enough. So it's like, oh, that must be for, like, New Game Plus. And I'm like, eh, I, I can't well, no. see myself. 
No, but there will be. Uh, that's to introduce that there will be other chalk throw moments. And I did yeah. dodge the second chalk throw. If you're throw. proficient enough, maybe people want to suck your dick. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, did. I, I did ask him like, "Hey, can I fuck this doctor?" And yeah. like, I'll never tell. That was my favorite yes. moment. <laughs> we were, we were. Yes, you yeah. can fuck the doctor. Oh, uh, that's oh, one of my favorite moments. We were sitting should. there like listening to the play, and he's just like, "Can I fuck this doctor?" And Willard's just like, ha, I ain't telling you nothing. <laughs> um, I'm enjoying the game a lot. I'm taking it very slow. Good. We're like, the I'm having days where I do want to play it, and I'll sit down and I'll play it. Like, I think uh, Persona 5R is the last time I played a game until like 5 a.m. because I was so absorbed in it was the first time Dark Souls was released on consoles Damn. back in like 2012, like 11 or 12. It's been that long um, on God. It, it's been a minute since I've had a console game where I've been like, all right, I've been playing it by myself until 5 a.m. Nice just about, because I'm so absorbed in the content. What's nice about Persona is like, if you only have 40 minutes, like the game is segmented into day chunks. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, just play days, oh, or the play thing I don't, don't like about it is like how smooth the transition is from like cutscenes and like talking to gameplay. Because it's like, I feel like I have limited time to do stuff, but I feel like the game is like one long cutscene. Yeah. Okay, and sometimes yeah. I forget I'm playing. And then I'll be like, oh shit, I haven't saved in three hours. Oops. You should save. <laughs> we should save your file. Yeah. Um, I, I've only died once and uh, I lost like an hour and a half in a palace. Yeah. Which. But you know what? Stakes. Sucks. But I, 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 I regained it back in like 30 minutes. I was like, oh, I remember where everything was. Avoiding enemies, like, you don't have to fight every enemy in a palace. And I think because your SP is super important to conserve, like, you really shouldn't. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Like, you can also hit enemies and then run and then just keep moving on. Like, there's a lot of, like, ways to, like, speed back to where you need to be. And then, like, you can strategy out if you're not high level enough a, a way to I, get up. Get past I, something that I think is really good about the game is that the, the game designers were confident enough to give you a lot of streamlining elements to the game, but the game is still difficult. And I think that's really good because, like, for example, they could choose it to where, like, safe rooms you can't fast travel to and you have to go through the palace every single time. And that's just an artificial way to inflate it. And, like, they even but, let you play like that if you want because they you unlock a bunch of shortcuts yeah. as you go through the palace. Mm -hmm. It's got great UX. Yeah. And... The like I don't need to talk about the UI. Everybody knows Persona has the best UI in the game. Yeah. Uh, yes, it does in the game that has it. It, it does. <laughs> but uh, one thing that I, I think I don't like, I just got to Mementos, which is like the underground, like free roam area. Mm -hmm. It's not like the dungeons or anything. And I like how they're like, oh, don't stay too long. If you hear chains, you've been grinding down here and doing objectives too long. You better leave. Yeah. Uh, something I don't think I like about that area is I I have the to get proficiency in the game, you have to craft lockpicks, and crafting lockpicks can consume don't, your night or don't evening. Don't use lockpicks in Memento. Save them for dungeons. Yes. I, I realized that the hard way. I was like, oh, like these chests are just useless. Like They just have above average items a cool in thing them that are consumable. Is, a, a cool thing about this game is I could give you like a thousand tips and still maybe yeah. not cover every... like. But like, it's it's good to not because it's, it's good to like learn... I, I, the one it, tip I give everyone is go drink your smoothies because that's really easy to miss. So it's from that, yeah. you're on your own. Good turn-based strategy games, I feel like, in the modern day are ones that give you all the information you need and, and then it's still a challenge. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's what I like. You know, I, I played Octopath before this and I'll say the combat's very similar. Um, yeah. The only thing that uh, makes... Uh, Persona a little bit different is they do a brave system essentially, but in the form of another one, um, plus a bit bat and pass, which yeah. lets you like you can hand it to another character and their stuff is even stronger. Which that has, I would say, on par with like being able to do multiple attacks or spells in one turn, like you can yeah. in Octopath and Bravely Default. Uh, but it's great, there's a lot of strategy there, it's really uh, nice. The final boss of this game. Like I think it's the perfect is a, the perfection of like what its mechanics are. I will have to see how that final boss is different than Octopath because in Octopath 
the entire game, you use four people, and then the final boss, you use all eight. That's hard to top. Yeah, you know, yeah it's Final, Final Fantasy VII did do it in 1998, but you know that still it's not off. I mean, in a, in modern day, I, I mean, that, that's enough. That's enough for, that's, that's for Persona Five. You still got like 80, well, 80 plus hours in the game. I mean, all of that is just the tip of the iceberg. With the rest of the iceberg being Persona Five dancing. <laughs> uh, Persona Five Strikers. As a player, of Persona Five dancing that got that game got me into rhythm games. And that is a good game. That is a very good game. Okay. I want to introduce this next part because I haven't, I'm not Willer or Joe, but I've, I've, I've witnessed the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. I've, se- I've seen the light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> I, I've experienced a taste of ambrosia. Oh, fuck. So, uh, y'all may have heard about this game a little bit in passing. This little game called 13 Sentinels. That was robbed of every single game <laughs> of the year award it, it deserved. It really, yeah, right? The fact it, it was not uh, it was not even um, considered for art style is is insane. The game is a walking goes to, painting. Goes to show you that us Western developers have a lot to yeah. like experiment work with. our way up to in terms of unique design. Mm-hmm. I think like, it is amazing. So we'll have talked about this game previously. So I'm going to take the the wheel here. Yeah, I I, t- I think I've talked y'all's years enough about this game. So I'll let yeah. Joe do most of the talking this time. So like Willer said before, Thirteen Sentinels is a game where basically the premise is you have thirteen high school protagonists, um, that and you are experiencing their lives right before essentially what is the end of the world. Yeah. Um, and they have to defend off these kaiju with their big mech robots. Um, and so the game is structured into three main modes, like Willer said. I, I, I was really doubting that third mode for a while, and then as I played the game, I'm like, no, that is this third mode. mode is like actually really that important. That is such a real mode that you're going to hit a story point that adds new UI elements to that mode, and you're going to oh, just, oh, yeah. fuck. <laughs> um, but basically, you have um, the narrative mode, uh, which goes through the story elements of the game. You have the combat mode, which goes through the, the final battle of the game that's happening. And then you have the archives mode that is basically where all the little hidden secrets and where the timeline is of the game, because the game is told not from a linear order. It's told from the perspectives of the protagonists. So, and you'll get to a point where, like, you'll go down a protagonist timeline, and then you have to stop and go down another protagonist timeline, or go into the combat mode, or unlock more things in the they archives. Gate, they gatekeep your progress on any given character, so that way you can't get too far too early, mm-hmm. which is very smart. Yeah, it's just like uh, Sonic Adventure 1, I think, is their uh, inspiration. Of course. A <laughs> brilliant game. <laughs> so, like, I've been playing VLR, and I think VLR at the time... And and uh, and nine and nine did a really good job with its like visual novel as kind of like let's we're using a game let's 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 take this medium and leverage it to our advantage, um, and I think they did it really well. And then this game just shits on that game three times over. I love department. VLR. Thirteen Sentinels is so much better. Yeah, in every way. I, I think that like because I've I've already committed to playing this game at some point and part of that is uh like you know i've gone through the virtues last reward experience with willer and he's like bradley like we both know that's a really good game so you have to trust me when i say this is like the next step yeah i games got really high in our game of the year list Um, yeah um so when it comes to the 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 visual novel part of it, what's really cool is that they they do a really good job of feel, making you feel interactive in the storytelling of it because it's not a hundred percent linear, but it is pretty linear what happens. But it tricks you enough to think that you have some sort of choice in what's going on in the matter. I w- like, I'll contest that and say that like I've since watched two playthroughs, neither of them are done. But the order in which they're getting information and you're getting information and I got information yeah. is pretty varied, and I think that's really fun. Like some things no, I... I knew conclusively early on, mm-hmm. I didn't know, and like some of the major like world bending twists I got to like relatively late. So like there's all sorts of uh, different ways you can tackle it. 
Yeah. But they and, guide your hips so you, you can't go too wide. Right. The linear parsing comes from the fact that, like, sometimes you'll look at a tree and a tree will be like, all right, you have these four different things, but really, like, you have to go in order of what those four different things yeah, are. Yeah. Yeah. Than, like, yeah. You get to branch off of that, but you are right. Like the information that I got was much different in the order of than what Willer got. Um, and I've been feeding Willer my theories. And I'm getting to the point. Theories are now, delicious. Yeah, I'm getting to the point now where I think I know what's going he, on. He I might, am now. He might, be, he might be finally understanding the premise of the story. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I think I'm eighty percent done with the story now. Yeah, so you're almost, um, you almost understand the basics. Yeah. But I think I think, I think the game does a really really good job of having making sure that its visual aspect is really interactive. But the brilliant part of this is that it separates the story portion of this game and the action portion of this game. And usually which I, that would seem bad, but like just the story of the like the this big climactic end world ending fight at the end, like that's such mm-hmm. a clever way to be like, okay, we're we're gonna do that so we can split. Like, full story, full action, and you can hop between the two. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, so, like, and what's great is that I can play the story for a while and be like, cool, I'm going to go blow up some fucking kaiju now. And you flip over to the destruction side of it, which is, um, it's not an RTS, but it's it's more similar to Final Fantasy VII than it is to, like, XCOM or something. Yeah. In that the, the battle is happening in real time, but... You, all of your mechs have like a ATB meter That's that fills up and that allows them to move and to do actions and to shoot their guns. So you're kind of like doing this like real time, like management of what's going on. But then when you have a bar filled time freezes, you can go like, all right, this is what I'm going to do. And then you do that action. And it's a really like, it's really good. And each weapon has its own different profile and it's good against certain enemies. Like there's armor piercing weapons that are, there are area of effect weapons. There are like single fire rail rifles. Um, like the, the story, the, combat... the story is already incredible and ambitious. But yeah. this game's combat has no right being as good as it is. Like they didn't have to yeah. go that hard, but they did. I, I was <laughs> I was shocked. Like I so I sit ridiculous. down. And I'm like, I am. I was like I was when I played like the first few levels of like the the mission. I was like oh. Oh no! I'm actually excited to play the the game part of the game because, like, when you're in VLR, you have the escape room stuff. There comes a point where you're just like, I want to get to the end of the story. Let's let's, let's talk these out. Yeah. I, <laughs> around cents, around I'm the seventy like, percent mark, you're like, I want yeah. the climax already. I, you've been jerking me off for forty hours. I need it. I need to finish. Yeah. I like this is so good. Like, I I get excited for every new mission that comes up, and I'm just, and like Willer said, there's like 10,000 missions after you beat the game that's just there that you can play. Because they're like, some of you are gonna get really into this, and we got you, dude. Yeah, and I'm just like, I want that. Like, it's it's so good. Every once in a while, I'll go in and like knock another three out, and I'll be doing that till I'm 80. uh And also as a system, so in game, you can't be in your mech for too long, or else it fries your brain basically. Yeah. So to represent that, um, and the destruction side of the game, you have to like cycle in and out your players. If you ever do somebody two missions, ever do some, have someone do two missions, they're out for a mission and cannot be used for like a mission until you've either chosen to rest everybody or you beat that mission. But then what? So you're like, okay, I'll just rest everybody. But the thing is, that's not how you get the high score because every win streak you get increases your score. Yeah. So it makes you want to keep going as long and fa- as far as you can. You should never rest people. You should always yeah. rotate. And the, the game like really rewards you for using everybody. Everyone has mm-hmm. their own little niches. Like So there's four classes basically with these mechs. But everyone has their own little niches where like all my they're all my children now. And they have their thing they're good at. And they're all useful. Mm-hmm. I need to give some more love to Iori because she's really like Iori. lagging behind. Okay, if you level up Iori, she gets a passive skill that reduces her wait time whenever she summons any structure. So guardians okay. and sentry guns, she can mm-hmm. pop them out real much faster than Juro and Ryoko. But Ryoko has double sentry guns, and Juro just has like a nice variety of weapons to go with and yeah. good stats. And so, then like, you got Jojo. I mean Ogata. Who just has an, has a three sixty degree I kill everything I punch attack? It's just which the is strongest insane. motherfucker alive. Like he's <laughs> he, if if you if he attacks you, you're melted, and that's that's yeah. his thing. 
Also, so he has good. a skill where the more you do the rush attack, which is like the punches, mm-hmm. um, the more damage they start doing. So it's like representing an aura aura rush. And I'm like, I totally see what y'all did there. And yeah. he looks like Josuke and is voiced by English Josuke. So like, it's yeah. it's all intentional. Um, he and his arc is bites the dust. Yeah. <laughs> so have you, have you gotten to the? You finished Juros, right? No, I I am oh. I'm. I, I'm like right. really close to finishing Juros. I they, finished Iori's, I finished Ogata's, I finished Kisaragi's, I believe. Okay. Um, I think I just finished Takatoshi's. Um, I, I have to check back in to see what I did. I'm almost done with everybody. At, at the end of Juros, they do this thing where they make a game mechanic that is really gamey part of the plot. And it it was really interesting how they did that. So I'm looking forward for you to get that. Um, who's your favorite? Uh, we'll just end it with like, who's your favorite characters right now? Because we've been talking for a little bit. Um, I really like Ogata. I wish Ogata was more in the story, and he's in it like a good amount. But like, I finished his his arc goes by so quickly. It might have just been because of the I way think that it's so I was... everyone like and I, I everyone I've seen when you start Ogata, you're finishing him. Like you just you need to do the next one. And he's not yeah, gated off because, very often, so you just fucking go. And his, what's cool about his is that, like, his is a lot more of a character development, like, him thinking about himself yeah. and less about what the overall, like, it's important to the overall plot, but, like... He's probably the because, least important character to the overall plot, but he's the yeah. maybe the the best characterized. Um, mm-hmm. So they did good on that. Yeah, and then, so I, I, I just, I really like Ogata. I like uh, Yuki as well. I think she's a really cool character. And then I just found something else out about Yuki and Nato, and I'm like, what the fuck? And Gotta put uh, on a show for Yuki Chan. <laughs> oh man, Amaguchi's also really good. He's a little fuck boy, uh, I love him. I do, yeah. He is a little fuck boy. Um, I'm really interested to get into I'm saving Gotas you for the very Goto end. Goto last because Goto is just they they meant they I truly think they mean you to play all of Goto as your last story segment because it's just ace attorney i was writing down notes the entire time motherfucker i like he's just Mm -hmm. going ham with revelations and it's just like the ultimate final climax for the game yeah um so i so like i would say like yuki amaguchi and ogata are like my three favorites i like um, uh, i like ogata mura and natsuno and bj Not so oh, Mira's just like is my, is my make my brain melt with I, that was a wild opening to his story. Mira's is probably the best story I know. It's his and Goto's. Um, I don't know. I don't know in which form Bradley will play this. If if like if he'll be playing it with me by himself or by himself. But like Bradley, there's uh, this thing in mystery games where like. First, like, when the plot gets going, he just starts punching the air like this, and he just, like, stands in front of the TV. Let's go! <laughs> Which is, like, that's a weird thing. But then, like, I'm going to be punching the air in my living room. I want to see Bradley rolling on the ground like I did, because he does that. And I'm like, that or, like, sad. whenever there's, like, a really cool writing moment, I'll, like, start bowing down to the TV. <laughs> there's some fun I, things there. I think they, they do a really good job of giving you enough information to figure out like oh this character is happening during this event of this character and this is why this character is not here but then it'll throw you a curveball and make you realize oh this is something else entirely this actually already happened so what does this mean the simplest thing is like realizing what's going on with tetsuya yida and juro izumi and you're like oh fuck okay yeah um, but, but I digress. If that game's if the characters were, here's the thing: the game is perfectly paced, so they probably couldn't squeeze anything else. Like the pacing is actually perfect. Um, mm-hmm. The characters are all lovable, but they're also not like the deepest characters I've ever seen. If somehow they were, which I think is impossible because there's 15 main characters really, um, and then multiple versions of some of those main characters. It would be the best game of all time for me if, like, if it somehow managed that. So it has to settle for being top three. So, yeah. bummer. It, real good. I am glad that after we had this huge discussion about it on my game of the year pass, I literally purchased the game from my phone and downloaded it straight to my PS4 in a whole different city. So when I got home, I was just able to sit down and play it immediately. Really cool. Technology is oh. amazing. 
What a thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, but I highly recommend 13 Sentinels. You should go buy this game and play this game. By the like, next podcast, not... Joe will have finished it. We'll do like a quickie. Like, I just want to see yeah. your thoughts on the ending. Uh, yeah. I, uh, we'll keep up with Tyler's persona progress as he goes on in short yeah. talks. And the game isn't. It's it's long, but it's not persona it's long. It's thirty five to forty hours, and like it's just perfectly paced in that time. Mm-hmm. IMO. Um, well, that wraps up most. Of, I I did I so I've been watching Cobra Kai season three. I'll just briefly bring that up as we finish. I haven't like finished it, so I don't. I want got to spoil interrupted it. on the last episode. What is with Cobra Kai and having like genuinely god tier final episodes of each season? Because like. Know. Some shit's going down right now that I'm very invested in. Uh, so as soon as this podcast ends, which is shortly, I'm going to jump back on that probably. Will there be a revelation to me that made me very happy because it made me feel less of a creep? Yeah, some uh, characters are of age, and that is important going in. That is- yeah. <laughs> Dude. Because I was just like, I don't, I can't watch this show because it's making me feel weird. <laughs> And then, and then Willard it's brought up that. Hey, hey, don't feel weird because while these characters of a certain age, I guarantee all these actors and actresses are probably in their mid-20s. Yeah, so. no, so they're high schoolers in the show, but, like, they're in their early 20s. Um, yeah, like, the, yeah. if you're physically attracted to these people, they are probably of our age. I was so I'm worried, so Okay, though. Jared. I was so worried, especially Whoa. for Corey. <laughs> That's what Jared said, too. In the commercials, they're older. <laughs> Oh god! Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, I just say that because, like, when I watched Teen Wolf, I was like, "Oh, this girl playing an eighteen-year-old is actually thirty years old." Holy That's shit! That's yeah, right. good on her. Um, or bad casting, one or the other. Like Cobra Kai is just good fun. Like it's it's mm-hmm. it's live action. It's the best live action anime out right now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it, it went full shown in this season. Like, straight up. It's always been like, shown in, but, like, it's super shown in now. And, yeah. like, I've always thought it does a good job at playing multiple sides. And now, like, I feel like the story is building up to, like, those two sides meeting to beat a common foe. Um, and I, I'm i on the last episode, and, like, they were hinting at it, but what's currently happening on the screen is making me think they're... The thing is, if they don't do that, it's gonna get annoying, because it's been too many times where Johnny and Daniel, like, bond a little bit and then they like johnny does something that pisses daniel off and then they go split their separate ways it's like you can only tease me for so long like make up your mind that is the one weakness one and the the fact that it's corny as shit but like that's that's the fun one thing i love about the show and you mentioned this in your first talk about it is um daniel's wife it's so funny she's hilarious it's, it's she's so funny but she's also so grounded that it makes you realize how absurd some of the things that, that are happening that's why she's funny she's the straight man of the show where it's like are you guys really like you guys have warring karate dojos like really like yeah do you hear well, yourselves also, like, she's not a bitch that's no. the other great thing she's, just that she's not like a hor- yeah she's not a horrible wife and it's not like she's gonna do something wrong she generally cares about her husband and is very supportive and, so and this season, to... like, even she's like, oh, Crease is fucking insane. We gotta do something about this guy. Like, Crease yeah. is genuinely, like, but he's, like, he's one of the best shonen villains of all time. Man, <laughs> I got to his flashback with the diner. I was like, what? I was like holy that was, shit. That was a fun little twist in that flashback. Yeah. I was like, wow, you make me actually kind of sympathetic for this asshole. Uh, he, they did that last season where, like, Johnny finds out he's, like, sleeping in, like, a homeless place. And yeah, like, I was like, "Damn, Crease is like he's got actual mental issues that need to be therapized." Mm-hmm. But anyways, that's Cobra Kai. Uh, season four will come eventually. Everybody Yo. buy Toriko. Everybody for buy for Toriko. our Worm people, uh, I want to throw this out there. I got physical editions of Worm printed and made, uh, dude, from an uh, online website. Uh, fuck. Show, I'll I'll put that picture maybe here and then like. Cause you, y'all need to see this. Like, if you've never seen Physical Worm, it looks sick. It looks, it's an eight Dude. book series, and they're chunk motherfuckers. Yeah, I'm yeah. making me look like a fool. I'm not the, I'm not the super fan anymore. Cause I don't have physical copies, and I want some now. I'm jealous. I, I got these for uh, my grandmother, who was reading it over the summer, and she does not have internet at her homestead. Uh, so she doesn't have access to the online book anymore. Fuck, that's wholesome. God damn. <laughs> 
Yeah. Uh, shout outs to Reddit user Dewey, who hooked me up with this uh, glorious setup. He He's the one who put all the work in. All I did was just reset up his files and get them reprinted for my yeah, own personal use. This goes far beyond just like, you know, copy and pasting from the website because he like did a, so a lot of work formatting things like the chapters that are forum posts. Like he actually like formatted everything out and used a different font and it's really cool. He made the 27.b uh, its own page, which is like, you did it. You <laughs> yeah. Got it right. Yeah. Um, the books are really well paced, I think, too, except like the first book is through uh mccray's like original and like expectations like leviathan is the end of the first book yeah and that's like 800 pages and then all of gold morning is its own book and that's like another 800 pages that's the one you gotta read that and arc the 17. second the second book infestation is like 200 pages what does that go up to oh wow that's probably slaughterhouse probably, Night or something. it's probably like right before slaughterhouse or maybe all of yeah, i don't know remember yeah. those guys uh, yeah man um but it, it's great i'm really excited that's her christmas gift so that's they cool. look great for for also the warm boys since i am commuting to work unfortunately there is a plus side though and that i get to listen to packed and pale while i drive and oh my god packed is such a good story tyler needs to read it so bad it is so good it is so good <laughs> like i don't know while both sat down and he's like i'm gonna write a non-battle battle shonen and he did it and it's man. also a battle shonen but it's also a non-battle battle shonen oh man and then, uh whenever i'm done with uh it which I, i'm getting close man uh the kids are in the tunnels dude oh no you get talking stop. about <laughs> you talk, better. talking about it i saw this breakdown today on it was on reddit and i think it was just r slash books and it was like breaking down stephen king's career I and it's that. like He's like, I, I don't see Stephen King as one author. I think there are three different Stephen Kings hmm. because depending on when in his writing career you're looking at, he just makes very different books. Like there's cocaine era, right? Where he's just a crazy man. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. And then I'll, I'll, I'll have some exciting anime to talk about next time we yep. come back. We, yeah. I've watched Me four too. different animes since uh, we left out. I'm Ooh, I so uh, I did finish Golden Kamui. That was good. I, th I think we talked about it. I hadn't finished it. I was at the beginning of season three. I finished season three. It's good. Introduced good a lot of new characters. Nice. Uh, I finished Haikyuu season four. Oh, man. I, 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 n this is when I would read a manga because Haikyuu is so unique. Um, Haikyuu but I genuinely can't. might have the best characters in all fiction, and that's no I cap. Can't. Like, because they're, they're the anime is so well animated. I'm just like, oh, it's so good. It hypes me up every week. I miss it already. Uh, um, It'll be back. I watched Is It Wrong to Try and Pick Up Girls in a Dungeon 3? Uh, it's it, it, That's my gimmick show, you know? Is it wrong? Like, is it wrong? It, it's, it's not yet, you know? Like, it's really weird how it was all about one girl and then... It's not anymore, but they still have like this intense rivalry. It's great. I don't know. That sounds like life. It was about yeah. one girl. It's not. Damn, um, and then that's, Jujutsu that's, Kaisen. That's facts. That's 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 the real Jujutsu thing Kaisen is the new Naruto, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, Jujutsu Kaisen. I is want it, to is get it that word? It's the what? It's the new Naruto. It's the new bee's knees. Oh fuck! The know. new Naruto. The new Naruto implies it'll get bad, so don't call it that. <laughs> yeah, I, here, here's all I'm saying is if I was reading this, I would already be out. I, I like Studio Mappa definitely carries this on the, on their back as I'll, being just well made. Yeah, but they also do CGI Titan, so they give it and they take it. Yeah. Still, the fact we'll that talk, they're we'll doing get more about the, Attack on Titan, the like, fact please. that they're doing Attack on Titan and this at the same time, and I think a third one is pretty nuts. Um. Oh. It, since we're talking about anime like a friend was showing me this show she really likes and then like i made it aware to her that she might partially like it because it's super gay and like it's totally a boys love romance show <laughs> yes no what <laughs> that's also super gay and it's also the best <laughs> um
It's called Given. And, like, Give. there's this little twink boy who's, like, a puppy dog who doesn't know how to socialize. And this rough oh. guy. And they're both guitarists. And the, the twink boy's like, can you teach me how to play in your band? And, and like, they're in a band with two older guys. Like, they're in college. And these are high school seniors. And then, mm-hmm. like, they're playing with college freshmen. And, like... I liked it. Like I, I, I'll see where it goes. I could like we'll see what 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 this is like. This is a new story for me. But I did give my friend a lot of shit for it, and I feel kind of guilty about it because I was like, Her puppy dog twink. It's so uh, like, on in your face, but like also like trying to hide it, but not well. Like, it, <laughs> I'm not really into romance in animes like yeah. too much. I, uh, I don't but know a if music it, I think it's a metaphorical really good in... romance story where it's like they love music, but they also love each other. Maybe that's yeah. Yeah. I, I was I was we I did two episodes. I don't know. Uh, I watched Carolyn Tuesday a bit with Kelly. Uh, I like Carolyn Tuesday, music. and I I do listen to their music on the side. That is the only anime I've ever listened to. Is, is that and the like, cute lolly girls in a band? Because like. No, no not Lolly. it's not Lolly at all. That's K on. Like, okay, my bad. Yeah, this is not like uh, it, it. The animation style like reminds me of Run with the Wind, um, but they're they have some great music in it. Uh, that's not reminiscent of like typical anime music. It's not like this one band and like all these like. Oh, like grand thing singing like they have this one song called uh, army of two and that's like their debut ep or something that they have uh i jam that song all the time it sounds like something you would hear on the radio it sounds like early taylor swift almost actually cool. uh, i like it a lot well that wraps up free talk Two. please join us <laughs> next time so we're actually like super backed up in videos that i have to edit but also videos we have to shoot because we're behind in Bradley One Piece, Modern One Piece, Jojo Leon, which we've never been behind in Jojo Leon. I, it feels dirty mm-hmm. being we, this way. Do we want it to wait until the next one comes out and make a twofer? I guess we can do a twofer. Yeah, that's fine. We're I, we're behind in other shit. And we haven't watched The Better Call Saul in like a month. And we were just getting to oh. like the really good shit in season five. So I was just thinking about how I wanted to watch Better Call Saul. It's, it's so it sucks that we're doing it as a group, but it's yeah, also great. I mentioned Giancarlo today, and then I was like, "Man, remember when we used to watch that together?" We'll do that this <laughs> next weekend. time. Uh, yeah, we're also going to talk about uh, oh another anime that will be on the plate for next time. That time I got reincarnated as a slime, season two. Ooh. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Uh, thank you for giving us our channel back, Shueisha. Uh, but also, fuck you. Goodbye. Yeah. We love you. Please don't do it again. 